On this episode of Real Frank Movie Reviews, we review the movie Ghostbusters Frozen Empire, starring Paul Rudd, Carrie Coon, Finn Wolfhard, McKenna Grace, directed by Gil Keenan. In this episode, we will be talking about spoilers, so there's your spoilers alert. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Oh, what a happy family. Boy, do I miss this guy. I guess he never saw Christmas Story. Does this movie live up to the franchise and the Ghostbuster nostalgia? My guest reviewer and I are going to break this movie down and give this thing an overall score. All that coming up next. Real Frank. All right, let's get right into it. My special guest reviewer is Pietro. Welcome back to the show, Pietro. Hello again. Could you give our viewers an overview of what Ghostbusters Frozen Empire is about? There is this guy who has this golden ball. He is apparently a fire breather or something like that. I can't remember it. He tries to sell the golden ball with a god inside to Ray, this shop in the movie. And when Ray tests it to see how much paranormal activity is in it, it beeps insanely. They take it to the testing lab and they and it starts controlling everything in it. Eventually, Phoebe is tricked by this ghost called Melody and into opening the ball, letting evil god of ice free, and he tries to get an army of ghosts to destroy all of humanity. All of humanity! <laughs> Humanities. Overall, did you enjoy the movie? Yes. They got in trouble. Then the beginning of the movie starts with them chasing a ghost. She gets out in the gunner seat. They shoot the gunner seat out and she's zapping this ghost, right? And then, of course, they do some damage. They do some damage. Chasing the ghost to get the ghost. And then the mayor is mad, right? The mayor that's always mad at the Ghostbusters. Did you recognize the mayor? The first ones. Yeah, you remember him in the first one? Yep. He's the one who sends him to jail and opens up the thing. Right. He was with the Environmental Protection Agency. Remember the EPA? So he was a jerk in the first one. And then he bring him back and make him the mayor. The mayor of New York. I mean, why would they make him the mayor of New York? I think the people of New York are smart enough to not vote him. Right? I don't understand that either. Why they made him the mayor. He was a jerk. And now they he's the mayor. They could have just kept him as the head of the environmental thing. Exactly. Did you have any parts that really scared you? Not one single part. There were like, mainly it was like the jump scares that scared me. Nothing else. The jump scares scared you? Yeah. What jump scares are we referring to? Can you give us an example of one? <sighs> trying to remember it. <laughs> Phoebe became possessed by the, the frozen guy, the frozen bad guy, and her eyes lit up. I am going to kill you. Did that scare you when you heard that part? Or when her eyes lit up and did all that stuff? Did it scare you? No. Are you sure? Yes. <laughs> I was not scared. Did the big frozen guy, the guy who freezes everything, that bad guy, the main bad guy that was in the little ball, did he seem scary to you? No. Did not seem scary at all. He looked like he was this tall, skinny guy. He looked like uh, Nightmare Before Christmas, that guy with uh, Jack. Jack Skelton. Yeah, he looked like Jack, didn't he? A little Jack that hovered. But no, he didn't have his legs showing, but he just hovered in a skirt. That's what it looked like with him. He was skinnier than, like, probably skinnier than a hot dog. Right. He's, like, skinny at the stomach area. And then in his chest, he's all of a sudden, like, wider. Did you believe that family, the Spanglers, could actually be the Ghostbusters? I mean, the original Ghostbusters had to come and save them in the first place. Yes, in the end, they do. Now, speaking of the original Ghostbusters, did you think they looked really old? They did look older. They are old. But the fact that they were put in some of these action scenes, and the action scenes looked like they were going to, like, they were barely moving. Ecto-1 became possessed and started backing up, and they were like, <laughs> oh, it was like slow motion, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, it was. The car was going normal motion, but they were just like, rawr, rawr, rawr. yeah, it was they very, even very weird. They mentioned their age in the movie. Did like they mention golden years? Golden years, right? What ages do you think of? Eighty. You think they're all in their eighties? I mean, they probably are, but they probably are not. I think one of them's close to eighties. I think uh, oh, Winston is. The original Spangler guy, I can't remember what his name was. Egon. Yeah, he's dead. <laughs> 
<laughs> he's dead. Yes, he's he's gone. He's no longer with us. All right. And Janine, you remember Janine? She was the secretary, right? But in this movie, this remember? movie, she's basically a Ghostbuster. Right, which is ridiculous, right? She's never been a Ghostbusters. She's a secretary. She puts on the suit, and she doesn't even wear one of those proton packs. She's got like a glove. Did you notice the glove? She had a glove. She didn't even put on a proton pack. I saw the glove, and I was confused on what it was. She gets a special glove. What part did you like? Firebender dude who's going down that fire pool, and it just continuously just keeps on screeching, and he's going so slow, and it's, it's funny. The guy that could do the fire? Yeah, and he's just going down the pole and dramatic to make a dramatic entrance, but it's just going so slow. It's going. Right. A lot of corny. Do you know what's any other Easter eggs in the movie? Well, there is one thing I found weird. On the scene when they were zooming out when the ice started appearing everywhere and it showed the bridge, for some reason, all the only cars I could see on the bridge were Amazon trucks. Oh, really? I didn't notice that. So there was only Amazon trucks on the bridge? Yeah, those were the only ones that were visible to you. You could only see the Amazon trucks. Did you notice the ghost in the library? Yes. That's a throwback cool. Easter egg, right? Because that ghost was in the... First one. Correct. As the first ghost. And did you recognize the person that came out of the library when they arrived? No. He was a throwback to the first one also. He was the one that called the Ghostbusters in the first one for that librarian ghost. Oh, another throwback is the green goblin candy dude. Slimer! Slimer. Yes, yeah, Slimer. Getting his name. They just continuously bring him back for the jokes. Yes, because he's he's like part of the nostalgia of, of the movies. Wasn't he captured in the first one? Yes, I believe they did capture him, but he became a friend. And, and in the cartoons, so he helps him, him out. out. What's your favorite character? Fire Breather, dude. He was funny. All right. And then who was your least favorite character? That ghost. That's name is Melody. What did you think about that whole part in the story of her uh, Phoebe playing checkers? She appears. They become friends. What did you feel about that? Did... Oh, that's what I wrote down for my least favorite part. The chess one. The chess scene? Yeah. Reason? is it's just it was boring what score do you give ghostbuster frozen empire 6.2 6 6.2 yep wow all right so would you go see this movie again maybe i haven't watched afterlife fully because you were scared but that was two years ago <laughs> it was two years ago. So you were scared for afterlife, but Frozen Empire, you weren't scared. I was like eight when Afterlife came out. What are you saying? Afterlife was scarier than Frozen Empire? I was eight, so I can't judge it now. So you're saying you weren't scared at all during Frozen Empire? Just a jump scare. Isn't a jump scare a scare? It's just a little shock. But isn't it considered a scare? Okay, can I just rank them now? So which one was your favorite then? I'm gonna say that the first one was my favorite. Okay. This one. And then number three is the second Ghostbusters. Number four is Afterlife. Because I didn't get to watch that one. You didn't you review that one? I did. Ghostbusters Afterlife. Yeah. Uh, Hollywood did it to me again. You know, they get me all pumped up for this movie. I'm thinking it's going to be this great movie. And I'm pumped and like, oh my God, I was a Ghostbusters fan as a kid. I still watch the one and two all the time. It's so much fun. I love it. It's like tradition. And then they're going to put this out and I'm so pumped. And then they give us this. <laughs> For me, overall, I give this movie a 4.3. And I only give it a 4.3 because of nostalgia. In reality, this movie's worse than a 4.3. But I was a Ghostbuster fan as a kid. I love the Ghostbusters. The movie wasn't that great. Just okay. I did not like the family whole part of this thing. No, the family is a Ghostbuster bunch now. Ah! And the villain. The villain was just a clown. The clown. There was no real scareness to this villain, this frozen guy. It was a joke. They could have made a scarier monster than the stick man. The stick man that blows cold air. Ooh. <laughs> Do you think people should go see this in a movie theater? Well, if you're a Ghostbusters fan, then yes. But if you're not and you're just going to watch it because you want to watch a movie, I don't think you should. Pietro gives it a 6.2. I give it a very, very generous 4.3. Until next time, thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. That's my line. That's my line. <laughs> That's my line. It's mine now. That's my line. It's mine now. I feel the lyrics start to seep up.
my veins like I bleed. Uh. Drop that bass on the beat for a minute. When I spit these words to the beat, no limit. I don't make no sense. I don't need no gimmick. I'ma say what I think, be real specific. And I'm asking the chase. I'ma pass on the race. You could ask me the way I attack every day. I adapt and I change. Never cap and I say what I mean. I was thinking you know me to stay like, uh. Keep my head up, shit gets harder and I get fatter. But that don't give me nowhere that gets you to give up.